Hey everybody, it's Liz LePage and I'm here to do a short clip video for you all about advanced masking techniques inside of On One FX. Many of you probably already know that there are quite a few masking tools in FX, but I wanted to give you a little bit better review of some of my favorite tools to be able to mask out backgrounds from foregrounds. I've got this image open here and on the right hand side of the screen you'll see that I already have an adjustment brush layer. I'm adding brightness, contrast, detail, warmth, and vibrance to my subject so that I can separate her from the background itself. So I don't have a mask created right now and we're going to go ahead and do that. On the left hand side of the screen I have my quick mask tool selected and this is a really great place to start. All you need to do to use it is select the tool and click and drag over the background that you want to get rid of. It's going to process the mask for you and do a lot of the hard work for you. Now, on the bottom left hand corner, there's a mask view button. And this is really important for you to be able to take a look at what your mask actually looks like around those edges. Anywhere that's red is being masked out and anywhere that you can see clearly has the adjustments applied. Now the quick mask tool did an okay job with our subject, but I want to show you one of the other aspects to using it that's really helpful. So let's go ahead and undo that mask view mode and undo our mask itself. Up in the tool options bar, there's something called the box tool that goes along with our quick mask, and it allows you to drag a box around the subject that you would like to save. Now, if you've already created a mask, a heads up, this will completely eradicate it. So this is a great starting point for you. So we'll go ahead and click OK and then click to drag a box around our subject. Now, if you don't get it right the first time, don't worry. You can actually resize this box before telling the program to process your mask. Now, once we're actually around our entire subject, I'll go ahead and hit the return or enter key and it'll process that mask for us. Now this tool did a much better job here. Let's go down to the bottom left-hand corner and take a look at that mask one more time. We got a lot more of our subject in here, so this is a way better starting point. Now on the left-hand side, one of the other tools that's really great, when you're dealing with bulky areas that you just need to quickly get out of the way, for some reason, that box tool didn't register her arm or part of her dress. I don't want to have to fidget around with anything complicated. I'm just going to go over and select my basic masking brush here. Up in the tool options bar, we do have access to our perfect brush, but I'm not even going to use it right now. All I want to do is just click and drag over the areas that are right in the middle of our subject that I don't need to worry about. We're going to be going over our edges in a little bit, but I want to get the bulk of the mask ready to go. Now, if I wasn't talking through all of this, these two steps would be really, really fast. We already have a great start to a mask. So let's go ahead and get out of our mask view here. And let me show you some of the other tools that you can use. On the left hand side of the screen, one of my favorites is the refine brush. Up in the tool options bar, you have a few different options for the mode here. You've got paint out, paint in, and auto. I really like to select the auto option because it allows for the tool to do its best job. Select what needs to be part of the mask and what needs to be left out. This tool is awesome for right around tough edges like hair, clothing, or trees. If you're dealing with trees, this one is awesome. So once I've got it selected, I'm just going to size my brush down a little bit and then click and drag over the edge of her hair where that mask was a little tough. Automatically, you're gonna see that a lot of that background has changed, and this is great. We're gonna go over to the left-hand side and do the same thing with her hair on the left as well. I like to do it in shorter bursts. I don't like to go around the entire edge here. That can get a little tough, and sometimes it has a hard time registering. So I like to do this tool in short bursts. Now let's go ahead and take another look at our mask. Look at what a good job it did around all of those tiny little hair tendrils. Now the last tool that we're going to be talking about is actually our masking brush here, but it's using our perfect brush technology. Now the perfect brush allows for color selections as you go through and edit in or out of your mask. 
Once you have the masking brush selected, go up to the top right hand corner of the tool options bar and select the perfect brush. Once that's lit up, you're good to go and you can paint in or paint out of your mask. Now what we want to do is we want to edit the edge of her hair. There's still a couple of little areas that you can see are not painted out here. So if you click on the X key on your keyboard, it'll allow you to switch from paint in to paint out without having to go up to the tool options bar. This is a really great check when you're doing advanced masking. Once I've got that selected, I'm just going to click and drag. And as I go around to the edge of my mask, it's leaving her hair alone and it's just editing out those last little pieces of our background. Now, if you go overboard, click the X key and you can paint back in the areas that you want. So this is an awesome universal tool here and I can use it around the edges and make sure that I get all of those little pieces of hair. Now, as I go through, I'm just switching back and forth very quickly to paint in and paint out. This is how masking works. A lot of people think that there's one quick tool for it and a lot of times it's combining all of your tools together to make an awesome mask. So in many cases, when I first edited this image, it took me about five minutes to make this mask really work. In some of the tougher cases, you may need to take a little bit longer, and then some images will snap, go super fast. So feel free to take your time with each one of these tools, figure out which ones work best for you. But as you can see with the combination here on the right hand side, in just a couple of minutes, we have a killer mask along the edge of her hair, which is one of the toughest things to mask, especially against such a complicated and difficult background.